It is now time for the world famous Butch and Bob show here on WYFO FM and Jessup. It is brought to you by First Southern Bank, Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings, Murphy Builder Supply, and O'Quinn and Associates. Hi, I'm Mandy Yalmans. And I'm Raymond Brown with First Southern Bank. As your locally owned community bank, we're here to help our community grow. Our customers are why we are here. You can tell we want your business. We offer all types of deposit products, personal and business. We have fast, efficient service, and yes, we have online banking too. I'm sure we have an account to fit your needs. Stop by or call us at 912-588-1010 and see how First Southern Bank can help you. For FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings in Wayne County is a popular thing. To dine or take out for one delicious meal, and with the low great prices, it's simply a steal. Famous for the variety of sauces, mild, wild, and senior inferno. When it's time to eat lunch or dinner, Damon's Restaurant the place to go. Located in the middle of town on West Cherry Street, yes, Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings simply can't be beat. So next time you're hungry and looking for a great meal, head to Damon's Restaurant and enjoy a great deal. The number to call is easy, 588-WING, 588-9464, the real thing. Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings, those chicken wings are a very popular thing. Since 1946, Murphy's Builder Supply has been serving the folks of Jessup, Wayne, and surrounding counties with quality products and knowledgeable service. Matter of fact, they feel they sell service first to make sure you get exactly what you need for your home improvement projects. And with each employee at Murphy's being there for 10 years or more, you know you're talking with someone with the experience to help you with building supplies, tools, paint, and all the things you need from a full-service hardware store. The best choice in home improvement is Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. Hi, Wayne and surrounding counties. This is Sean O'Quinn with O'Quinn and Associates. The one constant in life has changed. Throughout our lives, we will go down roads that we never imagined. I have decided that it is time for me to make a change. I have decided to start my own independent insurance agency. What does this mean for you? Better rates and multiple companies. Give us a call at our new number, 912-385-1000, or stop by and see us. We are still at 212 South 1st Street, and we look forward to serving you. The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in southeast Georgia. The world famous Butch and Bob Show. World famous Butch and Bob show right here on WIFO, 105.5 FM and Jessup, three minutes after eight o'clock here on this Monday morning is the 25th day of April. And how's it going, Bob? It's good. It going good? Uh, some good interviews you had there with the, with the uh, students getting those uh, athletic scholarships. I mean, just uh, yeah. proud for those kids. It's a good day when they, you know, they have that sign. They do a good job at high school, that sign and ceremony. Friends and family are there and it's just a, it's just a nice event, but. It's always nice to see those kids sign those scholarships to yeah, is, go off to college. And really have it for Garrison Keith. That's a good kid. I mean, he's, like I said, he's been through a lot of adversity in his life. And to get a scholarship to Morehouse College. Uh, Which sport was that? Football. Football. I had a chance to talk to his mother and tell her how proud I was. I said, he, he was one of our favorite kids this year. And I mean, he was just he was just blunt in you know, the first Game said this team needs discipline, and that's unfortunately what they didn't have and didn't win any games. So, what uh, position does he play? He plays defensive back, but defensive he said back. They, they're going. They signed him as an athlete. He could play. He could play defensive back. Yeah, off. He's, he's got that speed. But I'm just happy for the kid. My city, is, that's uh, great. I mean, to be go through everything he's been through. I said at one time he you know got kicked off the team because of disciplinary issues, and he you know came back and they gave him a second chance, and he made the best of it. So. Really happy for Garrison. Just a good kid. All right. Well, we do have a guest in here this morning. It's a fair time here in Wayne County. we got the lady who knows all about it. Heather, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, this week, as people probably noticed this weekend, a lot of rides were coming into the fairground. So we're kicking that off tomorrow through um, Saturday. Um, it's going to be out the J.C. Fairgrounds, and we're excited to have them and excited to offer this um, this fair to our community. Um, it's going to be Thursday. I mean, excuse me, Tuesday through um, Thursday. It's going to be from 6 to 10. So and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. 6 to 10, 6 and then 10. Friday and Saturday it will be 6 to 11. Okay. It is $10 per person, which includes all the rides. Children under 32 inches get in free, but they don't have, they don't, they're not allowed to ride any rides. So it's better just to pay the $10 unless your baby's in a stroller and 
can't walk or anything because there's a lot of rides that are there for the small children, the carousel, the um, little boats, the dragons, and things like that that they can sit on and be buckled in and mm-hmm. ride. So yeah. basically it's just straight across the board, $10 a person, and that's going to be at the fairgrounds this week. Now, that's a deal. It Ten is. bucks, and you get to go in there and just have all that fun and all those rides. It's always just bring you an extra little bit of money because the food. Oh, yeah, you got all the other the stuff. Food. The, food, the food. The food and the games and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's a fair. You know, yes. you go there and you have fun. The candy apples. Fun to the fair. The candy apples, the fun of cakes, the cotton candy, and, of course, you know, everything from sausage dogs to corn dogs to hamburgers to fried Oreos to, you know, the slushies, the lemonades. Fair food is always the best. So um, bring you a little bit. Send your kids with a little bit extra money because there is a lot for them to taste on, too. So. Okay. Anything else going on? Anything inside the buildings or just a fair? Well, uh, we have a couple of um, booths and exhibits people are setting up. Um, We've got a lot of people that are running for um, positions for school board, county commission that's going to be there to um, hand out some goodies and things. And then we have a few vendors that will be on the inside. Um, We have not, you know, got into the entertainment and things like that because basically it's hard to, to find a spot to because this fair always brings in a full fairground of rides so we haven't we've had some calls wanting to do entertainment for us and you know basically see if mm-hmm. we were interested right. in entertainment but we just haven't stepped to that so there won't be no entertainment except the fair and fair, fair rides itself. and of course yes we have a um, fairground fair building with vendors okay that'll be well, some different good. things yes all right, and this is the Wayne County Fair coming up uh, tomorrow through Saturday out there at the J.C. Fairgrounds across from Rainier. And as you mentioned, 6 to 10, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 6 to 11 on Friday and Saturday. And if anybody has any questions, they can call our office um, at 427-3233. I'm going to encourage the public, if you have small children and you're from here, go ahead and bring your kids Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday and Saturday is when... We're just bombarded from people from all over. Right. And you, when you pack a 1,000 plus in that fairgrounds, we start getting the complaints and the calls. You know, my child had to wait an hour, hour and 20 minutes for a ride. Or, my, you know, that's how it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, the weekends are basically for, you know, we do this for our local, but everybody comes from everywhere. They're, you know, a lot of people have not picked up and started moving again. And, and um, we have, and they come. They come and they pack that place in on Friday and Saturday. We end up having to open two ticket booth areas because we can't move them in fast enough and get them out fast enough. So um, I encourage everybody to to come Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday if you're from here and you have small children. Yeah, that would be a good idea. Definitely. Definitely. All right. Fair coming up. Wayne County Fair. Wayne County Board of Tourism in charge of it. And uh, it's always a great time that people have at the fair. Yes. All right. Encourage everybody to come out and enjoy us. We're working on rescheduling the kayaking excursion um, that canceled because of High River. Um, so keep your ears open for that. Hopefully our, it's starting to fall out and we'll have it a few is. sandbars. Down, yes, yeah. a few sandbars popping up so we can we can reschedule that in the next couple of weeks. And, of course, the first weekend in June is going to be our catfish tournament. First so weekend in June, the catfish tournament. That's going to be tournament. the 4th and 5th. Okay. So be looking for that information. And we'll be back in to see you guys and. Do a little bit more talking and promotion on those things. Okay. So waiting for that date on the kayak canoe excursion. The read set on that because last time you had it set, the river was way too high. And uh, then, of course, the catfish tournament the first weekend in June. That is it. All right. Bob, any other questions or comments for Heather from the from the tourism board? Uh, always good to see you. Appreciate you coming in. I said it's always a big event. Like I said, you mentioned that, pack, that place is packed on the weekend. It is but, very much. Yeah, yeah. But the food is pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> Fair food's good. All right, Heather, you have a good day. Thank you. Y'all have a blessed day, too. All right, we'll be back more of the world-famous Butch and Bob show in a moment. When further treatment is no longer an option, hospice can provide services to manage symptoms and difficulties caused by illness, emotional, psychosocial, and spiritual care, as well as support to the families and caregivers are all part of hospice care. Hospice of South Georgia has been a part of the health community in Wayne and surrounding counties since 1998. The professional yet compassionate attention provided by our staff is unsurpassed. Widely supported by donations from the local population, hospice of South Georgia is the local nonprofit 
Hospice in Wayne County. Our administrative office is located at 1625 Sunset Boulevard, and Hospice of South Georgia accepts anyone who meets hospice criteria, regardless of their ability to pay. Please call 912-588-0080 to speak with someone about hospice care. That was 912-588-0080. We are your hometown hospice, and we are here to serve you. Hospice of South Georgia, working to add life to your days. The life-changing devastation of infertility or the loss of a baby is too hard to walk through alone. The good news is you don't have to anymore. Find the support and community your heart has been craving at the Hope Narrative, a faith-based infertility support conference, Saturday, April 30th at Wayne Christian Academy in Jessup. Get details and register online at hopenarrative.org. That's hopenarrative.org. Register online at hopenarrative.org. Big Dog Country Radio, 105.5 FM and Jessup, WYFO, 811 here on this Monday morning, the 25th day of April. And, um, and Bob, the Wayne County Varsity Baseball team finished the se- – I love what you – finished the season out with two victories there. But I love what you said, what the uh, the, the one Robbins coach told Luke the last time he get up the bat. Just – what did he say again? He said, don't even bring a bat. Don't even bring a bat. They walked him intentionally four times, which I don't understand. I mean, because he hits home runs. Well, the game didn't mean anything. It wasn't, it wasn't like they were going anywhere. I mean, but he hit a home run in both games, so they just they fear, they're just walking, huh? They just fearful intentionally. They walked him three times. The fourth time, they, the coach yelled out, "Don't even bring a bat to the batter. Don't just go first. <laughs> but it's good to get then those that's two funny wins right there. That's funny. I thought it was funny, but like I, I said, I just. Uh, I, hate, I thought right there. I hate to just, you know, they're talking about that mad dog. On, when on further the treatment is no longer. about how they need to do away with the intentional walk. He said those major league players are paid to compete, not to intentionally walk somebody. You know, that pitcher is being paid to get people out. He should throw it over the plate. They should do away with the intentional walk. So I don't understand what they're That's just part of the game. School. It's always been part of the game. I know, but in high school baseball it seems kind of whatever. Four times. You could just throw like wide that. out. Just, it's not like a, you know, intentionally just wide outside. Yeah, they could have walked him. They could. Have, you know, there's always the un, unintentional, intentional walk. Yeah, that's what I mean. So, just a little yeah. bit wide outside or inside yeah. or something like that. You know. But that was kind of funny when he told him not even bring a bat up there last time. That is funny. First. I'm sure he brought a bat up there though. No, he just walked first. He just walked. First. <laughs> yeah. Just save the time, yeah, huh? That's what save saying. the four pitches, yeah. huh? What is this dude? <laughs> But he's having a good year. I said, he's got four home runs already. So I said, it's good to have him back in that lineup. Yeah. Tell us the playoff around. situation for the Jackets. They're going to Monday's Mill High School. I said Monday's they, Mill they High had School. A, they had a three way tie for a second. They wound up flipping a coin. So wow. it wound up Monday's Mill got the number two spot. Uh, Jonesboro, I think, finished three and. Did you say Monday's Mill is in jo- in the Jonesboro it's in area? Jonesboro. It's okay. right there around that area. Okay, so we've got the full bracket here. For five, Monday's eight. Mill High School, who Wayne County playing on Wednesday. It'll be a doubleheader starting They're at four, I believe. Yeah, four o'clock. It's forty minutes. Game two is going to be forty minutes after game one, and game three, if if needed, will be on that Thursday at four o'clock. So it's Wayne County, the Region One Team Three, taking on Monday's Mill Region Three Team Two. Other teams in that bracket on the left side, Cartersville takes on St. Bias, uh, Chapel Hill. I'm sorry. That's right. Woodland, yeah, Woodland Cartersville takes on St. Pius. Chapel Hill plays Appalachia. Union Grove plays Whitewater. At the bottom part of the bracket, Jonesboro takes on Coffee. So Jonesboro finished three in that region. They take on our number two team, Coffee, at Coffee. Chambly and Cartersville, Greenbrier, Jackson of Atlanta, McIntosh, and Ola. On the right side, it's Stars Mill, Locust Grove, Jackson County, North Springs, Calhoun, Decatur, and Veterans are four team from our region, taking on the number one team from Region 3, Woodward Academy. And the lower part of the right bracket is Jones County, Harris County, Midtown, Loganville, Southwest DeKalb, Blessed Trinity, and Forest Park, and Ware County. Ware County is our number one team. So Forest they Park is coming to Forest Wake Park Cross. Park is coming to Wake okay. Cross. They're the four team from that region. So Ware so County and Coffee County get the host in the first round. Get the host first round, right and there. And us and veterans are on the road. Us and veterans are on the road. Okay. But the three C looks like the easier bracket. You know, it always happens that way. Like I said if we get by Monday's Mill, we'll play most likely St. Pius. If we beat St. Pius, we'll most likely play Whitewater. We played Whitewater earlier this season up there in Athens, Georgia. That was the game that 
when extra innings and they had the time we, 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 we had to leave the field. Yeah, that's yeah. our one tie of the season. So now let's let's say that we get past Monday's mill this week. When do we play? It will be a week from Tuesday. So it'll be Tuesday. Tuesday so we play this week. Wednesday and possibly yeah. Thursday, and then the, right. the next round will be the following Tuesday. Yeah, the, next sec- the second round is May third and fourth. The third round is May ninth and tenth. The fourth round is May fourteenth and sixteenth. The championships May nineteenth and twenty first. Okay. So. The, the brackets are out. Uh, some of the brackets still not full. I was trying to look at the three eight bracket this morning. Uh, they don't have who happens playing. They don't have Pierce is playing. Long County is playing Liberty County in round one in that triple A. You know Pierce has been number one all season long in the state, but they don't have who they play and they don't have Appen's opponent not in the bracket. Find anywhere? I had this morning. I, I mean, I, I, I copied the bracket this morning. They still don't have that team listed in those brackets. Oh, okay. So hmm. hopefully we'll get it sometime this afternoon. But. I know that Long County is going to take on Liberty. I saw Sean Peake, the athletic director of Long County. He told me that at the golf course Saturday that they wound up number three. Uh, they had a good year. They're going, but they go to Liberty in round one in Triple A. But I looked for Afton's opponent and and Pierce's opponent this morning, but it's not filled in just yet. The bracket's so. not filled in yet. Huh? But the five A bracket's complete, so we know everybody in the bracket. So. Good luck to Ware and Coffee and Veterans, and hopefully our region will do well. You know, this is when you find out you know, how tough your region is. Right, you know, right. You know, See how we, you do four you, 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 you hope your region's able to compete statewide, and we've been able to compete statewide in the past. So, you know, what I got about Bundy's Mill was they score a lot of runs. They're a very athletic team. So, you know, they're averaging about six, seven runs a game. So, but their record's uh, about the same as ours. It's like a, they've won as many games as they've lost. So, we should be able to go up there and compete with them, and I say it is all about playing well. I like our I like a three game series with our pitching. You know, and I said Asher, Kathy, Gavin Mixon, and Carson Shaver have shown they can give you a quality innings every time they go out to the mound. So relief pitching's been good. If we can just find a way to hit the baseball a little bit and score some runs and play good defense, we should be fine. Yep, yep. Cut down the mistakes and score some runs. The bats are starting to come. Like I said uh, Palmer Lamb had a good series up there. At, uh, one of Romans, he went five or seven. Uh, Aiden Hall went five or seven with a triple. I said Luke had the two home runs. So Garrison Grantham had a key hit. Uh, Joshua Campbell had a key two odd hit. So the two odd hits are starting to come. So hopefully Wayne County can go play well. They practiced yesterday. Had a chance to go by practice. The kids seem pretty excited. They seem confident they can go and win this series and get to round two where they play the winner of again Wood- Woodland Cartersville and St. Pius. Most people believe it'll be St. Pius. What in that? But you don't, can't ever tell. That's why you got to play the games. So don't look too far ahead. But I like where we're sitting in that bracket at the number three seed. Like I said, if you're if you're Ware County and you beat Forest Park, you got to turn around and play Blessed Trinity in round two. And if you're Coffee and you win your first round, you got to turn around and play Cartersville in round two. So <laughs> we know how good Cartersville. We know how good Blessed Trinity is. So I think, okay. I think we got the easier draw personally. So it's just a matter. of – Taking care of business and winning this first series and beating Monday's meal. Okay, but all starts, near all starts Wednesday up at Jonesboro. Yeah, it's a four-hour drive. Yeah, it's a ways up it's there. A good ways it's up Clayton there. County, I believe. So, yeah. So, um, yep, yeah, it's Jonesboro, all right. Okay, well, we wish the Jackets the best of luck. As they start uh, state playoff action this Wednesday, doubleheader at their Monday's Mill in Jonesboro. And then um, we wish uh, the rest of the, sea of the uh, teams in our region the best. And, of course, we wish uh, Applin County, Long County, and Pierce County uh, good luck in, in, in their playoff action. Yeah. And Jeff Davis, of course, is in double A. Paul Glass, you know, will make another run. So they're always very formidable. You know, they've, mm-hmm. they've won three state titles already over there in Jeff Davis, so. Don't cut them out. They might win a fourth. Never can tell. Paul's a good coach. Been proving that for many years. He's been there forever. That's right. (laughs) It's like he's been there forever, yeah. His two twins are seniors this year, so we'll see what he decides to do. Okay. All right. And uh, so uh, that's going on. And then when when does the golf team play again? I'm not sure they got. I think they, they got, got some they more got, matches yeah, they before got some the more state, matches, right? Yeah, so, but the state's set for May 16th and 17th. But I think they got a few more matches before between now and then. So. Okay. Uh, I'm glad they won that region championship. Yeah, won the region. Now going for the state title. Mm-hmm. All that young talent out there. 
and uh, we wish them the best. Did you say another golf tournament's coming up? Exchange Club this Saturday. Exchange yeah. Club is having their annual yeah. golf tournament this Saturday, Saturday yeah. out at Pine Forest. You sign your team up. So. Okay. That's always yes. a big fundraiser for yeah. the Exchange Club. It's always a lot of fun. Yeah, they, they, put on, they put on a good time yeah, out there at the same club. Does. 8.30, like I said, call the pro shop at 427-6505 or get in touch with Raymond Brown. Let me give that number. That number is 588-1010. So get in touch with Raymond or get in touch with the pro shop, 427-6505. Sign your team up. Again, 14-hole, four-man scramble, limited 22 teams, $60 per person. So... Sign your team up today. Okay. Got my team ready to go, so I'm excited. It'll be fun. It was a good day at the golf course Saturday. Shot my lowest score ever. You did. You shot your lowest score ever yeah. this past Saturday out there at Pine Forest. Yeah. Nice little 86. Man. Proud of you, Bob. 86. Man. I can't believe it. Man. It's good. The game's coming Someone along. Someone buy you a meal afterwards or something? Yeah. No. No? Just okay. have customary two drinks. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, good, good, good. See all that regular playing is paying off for you. Paying off, yeah. yes, sir. It's amazing. The more you practice, the something the better you get. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> all right, and uh, so good, good. Glad, glad you did that, Bob. Glad, glad you had that 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 low score there. Eighty six, man. Did you ever think that you would shoot an 86 out there on Pine Forest? Not really. Not really? <laughs> Not when I started. <laughs> Come a long way since a year ago, January. I promise you that. So. Yeah. But like I said, it's all about practicing. But that lesson helped. So that was that was the big oh, thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's amazing how those lessons will help out, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's been fun the last couple of weeks. So. Okay. Any meetings it. going on this week that we need to know about? School board meets tomorrow night. Interesting topic about the lights at J.C. Stadium. You lights know, at J.C. Stadium. That seemed like that many years ago we talked about that, but that's probably like 10, 12 no, years ago. No, you know how time flies by or 15. talked about the baseball lights. You know, the problem is GHSA's come in and said those lights just aren't. Yeah. You know, they're just up, not up to snuff. they got to get those, kinda, those new lights. They put kinda, out a lot of lights. It's kind of dark at the stadium. Dark compared to a lot of these stadiums today. Yeah, the baseball lights are, are due. Um, but um, I guess we've got to have brighter lights at J.C. Stadium with those new bulbs that really put out a lot of uh, a lot of looms. Stadium needs a lot more than new lights. Hell oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd hate to see him spend a bunch of money on new lights. But, you know, yeah, that's where about the state them. makes you do it. Yeah. Oh, yes, but they, need not, they need a lot more. They need a new press box what they need. I'm telling you, it's going to fall over one day. I pray I'm not in it when it does. Yeah, they got good. They got it duct taped up pretty good, Bob. I saw it. They, duct they got it duct taped up real good. Yeah. You extra rolls of duct tape. Yeah. Come, yeah, you, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah, come stand in it one time. <laughs> <laughs> they doubled up on the duct tape, man. You, you're I've fine. Had, you're fine. I've had that nightmare at least five times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's how I die. Uh, the press box just falls just over. Just fall right over. Because you're up on the top level now, aren't you? Yeah, yeah you're, they, they moved yeah. you on up. It's, it's you, a, you, you didn't got the penthouse suite up there it's now. A, it's a scary nightmare. I wake up and sweat. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> just wake up and sweat. Yeah. That press box is calling. You know, you're going to have to probably go see a counselor on this, Bob. You know, maybe they can help yeah. you through this these bad dreams you're having. It's, it's, it's a nightmare. <laughs> 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 I've had it several times. Oh, uh, I just hope it I just hope it doesn't become reality. Yeah, <laughs> so, no, no, no. Right. I'm sure it's just fine, Bob. <laughs> oh boy. A restroom up there would be nice. That'd be nice. Said, yeah, that's, yeah. that's the best thing they did the baseball field. They put a restroom in that press box. Oh up they there. did? Yeah, oh that, that's that great. Really helps out. Uh, I'm sure it does. Because you know, you're sitting there for having, you know, you know, the football game, you're, you know, you're there for a long time. Of course, you know, you do get the halftime, but you get to slip away just a little bit. I run, yeah, but running, then when you do I'm, slip away, everybody else in the stadium is in the bathroom. Trying. It's like that 11-inning game or over in Ware County. As soon as that game was over, Coach McDonald came, you're not doing an interview. I said, Coach, my bladder was – yeah. I, had, I, I had to get to the Had to go, yeah. yeah. Sitting there for 11-inning baseball game and you couldn't go yeah. anywhere, yeah. Not as young as I used to be. So no, 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 no. 
at our age, when the bladder wants to go, it's going to go. <laughs> I don't know how many Kegel exercises you do. It's still going to go. <laughs> oh, boy. So, um, well, uh, Wayne County baseball this uh, Wednesday, first round of state playoff action, taking on Monday's meal in Jonesboro. And it'll be a doubleheader starting at four, you said. And uh, then the F game will be on Thursday. And if they make it past that round, it's the following Tuesday that we'll play. NFL draft this Thursday, exciting times. Like I said, be interested to see what Jacksonville does with that number one pick. You know, I hope they don't take. You know, there's a lot of reports they're going to take Aiden Hutchinson. I hope they don't take him. I hope they take Walker from Georgia. Or I, I thought for sure they take Evan Neal, the tackle from Alabama, to protect Trevor Lawrence. But apparently they're they're not going Evan Neal. They're going somewhere else. So be interested to see where they go. Be interested to see what the Falcons do with the number eight pick. A lot of people think they're going to select a quarterback. So. See what the Falcons decide to do. I mean, they lost Matt Ryan. They got Marcus Mariota as the starter, but the, they said they're going to look for their future quarterback in that number eight pick. So we'll see what the Falcons decide to do. Okay. All right, we'll see. Steelers definitely need a quarterback in that number 20 pick. I still think they're going to trade up. They want the quarterback out of Liberty, Malik Willis. So that's what I look for the Steelers to do. They're going to get their franchise quarterback, trade up, and either get Kenny Pickett out of Pitt and – from Malik Willis out of Liberty and go from there. Nobody sold on Mitchell Trubisky. No one is, huh? No. Okay. I'm not excited about Mitchell Trubisky. Who's he? He came from Buffalo. Bu- Buffalo? But where did he go to college? Uh, you have any idea? Uh, don't know. Got, I mean, I just don't. They, the I can't remember. Just didn't, you know. Yeah, he got drafted. Went to Chicago. Had Chicago Bears had him for a couple of years and they. Like I said, he didn't pan out, and he went to Buffalo and sat on the bench for a couple of years. So, okay. But like I said Pittsburgh needs a quarterback with that first pick. You keeping up with your Pittsburgh te- uh, uh, USFL team? No. You got a Pittsburgh team there, Bob? It's playing right now. Nobody cares about USFL football. <laughs> My Pirates are eight and eight. I'm excited about that. Pirates, Pirates are eight and eight. Right. They're only two games up. They beat up on the Cubs over the weekend, so I was glad to see that. That's the excitement right now. They're they're still in the hunt. They're not dead and buried as of yet. Normally at this time of year they're already dead and buried. So before April's over with? Yeah. You gotta be kidding me. Not before April's over with. I saw a bad they've been the last couple of years. But they got some talent. Got some good pitching, so you know, watching them. Eight and eight. Hmm. Doing better than the Braves. Braves are seven yeah, and Braves. ten. Yeah, well. Braves haven't won a series yet. Yeah, well, they'll they'll come around. You know, they got the talent. They just you know, get it all gelled together there. They'll be fine. They did the same thing last year. They did the same thing. I mean, they were, they were what, third, fourth in their division by the all-star break, and they came out and bore down. So I'm not I'm not too worried about them. No, way too early. Way too early. I mean, the first month's not even over yet. You know what I mean? So. Long season. They and the Braves have off today. They'll be back in action beginning tomorrow against uh, the Cubbies there in Atlanta. As I said, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So they got a long way to go. Yeah. Unfortunately, the Hawks look like they're going to be eliminated in round one. Miami went up three yeah, games does. to one. Yeah. So three games to one up. Thought they'd do better than that. That was a heck of a race yesterday in Talladega with uh, Ross Chastain coming in there at the last moment and um, and pulling by Larson, and it was just a. Uh, it, it, as always on that that final uh, you know half a lap of Talladega, they start bumping and grinding and banging and bricks and stuff like that. And Ross Chast- uh, Ross Chastain won the Talladega 500 yesterday. Just a an amazing finish as it usually is there at Talladega. A lot of banging going on. A lot of banging. Hey, there, man. We got two more candidates coming in this week. Uh, Kelvin Mock is running for school board in District Two. Will be our guest tomorrow. We got Brian Griffiths, who's running for county commissioner in District One. Uh, he'll be here on Thursday. Let's look at the list. We've had just about everybody in here. We got a few more people to go, but uh, like I said we're going to get Kathy Keith and Jamie Hickox back in here as they're running again in District Five. So we'll have everybody in before the May twenty fourth primary. Reminder again: if you're not registered to vote, today's the last day to do that to be eligible to vote in the upcoming primary. So if you're not registered, go by the registrar's office and. Today. Yeah, today is the deadline. So, right. yeah, if you're not registered by today, you can vote. All right, Bob. Anything else? That's going to do it. Have a good day.
All right, the world-famous Butch and Bob Show brought to you by First Southern Bank, by Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings, Murphy Builder Supply, and Aquinnan Associates.